I'm going to sing the theme tune from now on. How the fuck are you? I'm kicking shit all over the place already here. Good man, Tom. You're all very welcome to uh, episode 21 of Buckshot for the 16th of August. Jesus. I don't know why I keep on getting surprised. We're halfway through now at this stage. 16th of August 2017. How the fuck are you? I'm good old form. Good old form. Can't complain too much, really, in all fairness. Uh, just had a cracking cup of coffee there. If, by the way, you ever get an opportunity, anybody listening to this ever passing through Minuth of the County Kildare, I want you to stop on Main Street. I'm not getting in any way endorsed by these people. I don't even... I'd say I've probably talked about these before, but it has to be the best cup of coffee. The best... It's actually a chocolatiers. They're Belgian chocolatiers. And, I mean, it's a bit hip. It is a bit hip, but fuck that. Their stuff is outrageous. I don't, I don't even know the name of it, but it's the only chocolatiers on the main street in Maynooth. If you want a flat white of superior standards and a chunk of chocolate that you can actually see people making through the glass yogi, yeah, I mean, there's probably lick marks all over the fucking glass from me. Go in there. It's delicious. You'll be fucking jittering after too. That's good stuff. It is good gear. You're all very welcome. Anyway, first time listeners, first time joiners, first time subscribers, you're all very welcome. And, I, and to the other gang too, you're all very welcome as well. If it is your first time, why not click subscribe? Share. Tell everybody about it. Have a good time. So, and, and, any, and you want to keep up with anything? I know I just share other people's podcasts and stuff like that. Nobody, nobody tends to share my ones. Bar the lads, of course, from WTF. Um, Danny and Mero the lads are great they actually they have a they, they've got a it's like more intelligent podcast than my one although they'd argue but in, yeah, yes good crack the yeah find me on twitter at buckshot pod that's the most likely place to find it but if you do need to send emails send the gmail buckshot podcast at gmail.com and of course you can follow me on instagram which is tom any comedian comic i think my big old ugly head is on it and if you want to find me on facebook you can just easily just go to Facebook and look for Tom O'Mahony. There you are, Tom O'Mahony Comedian. I really do need to get my shit together and get a website. I made all sorts of gung-ho efforts at making a website earlier this year and got things in place, have the whole lot lined up, and it's actually packed out pretty quickly. I didn't realise, I thought I'd be searching for shit to put on it, but I was actually having to pull stuff off. It was like, no, nobody's going to want to see this or read this, but no, I really need to get my shit together. It's just been bananas. One week after another just rolls into the... I, I need to sit down, cop on. See, this is one of the most committed things I've ever done is doing a podcast. It actually is, I'd say. On a weekly basis, rather than actually having a job job. Like, I mean, I agreed to do gigs and stuff like that, obviously, but... Yeah, that I actually have to put a bit of commitment to this meeting guests and whatnot and everything else, but then, you know... So you feel like you've done a good thing. Uh, upcoming gigs, sure, look at... I think we've... Yeah, that's easy to find out if you really want to find me anywhere I've got, I've got a lash of gigs coming up next weekend all right which I'll tell you about next podcast this weekend is actually going to be quite nice it's quiet heading down the country to visit the familia and I'm going to make a trip to Cork all right prior to the week previous that I will be in Cork anyway performing at City Limits but I'll tell you about that next week but I suppose up Kim and gigs the bigger ones are Electric Picnic Jesus Christ have a look at that lineup I'll be there I think I'm there on the Sunday because I'm in I'm gigging in Dublin the two nights beforehand. But I'll be there on the Sunday. I'll be at the Cork Comedy Festival. The day of my birthday, September 21st. I'll be performing there. I think I'm going to be at the Roundy. But it's yet to be confirmed. And of course, there are still some tickets left for my London gig, which is November 25th. So any of the gang that were... I talked to a bunch of people already who are mates that are living in London. Two weeks ago, we were at a wedding. And they were like, yes, fucking lovely. Lovely. Now anything more important may come up in the time so if you know anybody living in London fancy coming to a stand up show the Museum of Comedy just look for Tom O'Mahony or look for it on my Facebook page it's kind of posted at the top the event and the link straight to the tickets is right there so how was your week? my week was fun I had a bizarre week as yeah I suppose not that <laughs> how weird I think I was was I telling you about the Panto launch last week? I wouldn't have been able to tell you yeah I wouldn't have been able to tell you about it properly but it was good crack um, interesting to see what the fucking photographs come back like I do like the get up this year my my costume this year is going to be a bit of crack I'm going to be in it with uh, alongside hometowns and Strictly Come Dancing's very own Dale Cronin of South Tipperary fame he uh, 
hell of a nice lad, and a couple of new people in the pan- Panto, a couple of old legends back. But that was a, it was a, it was a good good time. I'd be interested to see now what because they're shit hot photographers. There's always like you, I never want to see photographs that just people are taken because like yeah, yeah grand yeah I probably just look like me. But when they're taken by a good photographer with good lighting and all the rest of it, I don't look like me. I look way cooler. So I don't mind seeing those ones when somebody. But then again, I look I'm to look like a bit of a gobshite in this. So I hope I nail that look. How was the week of gigs? I was in. I did a private golf society gig. It sounds posh, and it actually is. It was a good bit of crack. They were. I don't think they were expecting a comedian. I think one of the lads thought it'd be a good idea to spring it on them. Um, but they went with it. They went with it. It was get. It got. It got weird towards the end because, in fairness, they had their own uh, venue. Their own. It wasn't in the in a golf club event. So these are societies. So what they do is they move. They go around from club to club. Like, but this was in the venue of the bar that they're in. But I've actually done comedy in this venue before. But um, on a comedy night like you know what I mean a gig uh, so this is people just after finishing their fucking dessert and I wander out and I'm like but in fairness the captain he was good crack and the lads would give me a good bit of ins- info on him but what got weird I was to do about a half an hour and I was going grand and everybody was kind of on board even though they hadn't committed to it they were you know these are people out for dinner with their golf buddies but in when it was a gig before this this room actually had windows in the wall leading through to the other side of the bar a huge big fucking pub which were always had curtains on them you know drapes on them before or were fucking covered over some which way so you wouldn't see out nor see in so it's a secluded room for doing comedy or whatever but this particular night you could see straight through into what the rest of the bar was doing which was all fine that's grand but there I am about 24 minutes in we're having a good old time and I see this what like it was weird it kind of looked like a mirror of what I was looking through but it was actually just a a plate of glass I was looking through through to, and the other side of the bar about 50 metres away I could see his black chap standing up on stage and start singing like fucking 70s soul music I was just I was he was looking at me while because he could see me and I could see him and I'm trying to tell jokes and of course the music just blasted through the fucking wall it was one of those surreal moments where he was kind of singing and singing his heart out but he was like oh, I gotta do this dude and I was <laughs> <laughs> it's just okay and uh, I mean they went with it because I kind of I immediately had to point it out went well perfect fucking timing for my punchline which it was right on he was like so train it was something it was this is the joys this is the the glamorous side of comedy that you don't get to hear about folks um, the weekend was fine and a couple other kind of uh, gigs over the weekend but they were again a private thing or whatever but hosting things but uh, I was hosting the Woolshed on Monday night, which was amazing that the show went ahead because I drove into town through rain that I, and this is, I don't like to overly exaggerate, but this was fucking hor- I like, we do rain fine here, but this was car wash shit. Like, there was fucking cars pulled in on all sides of the motorway and it was fucking, got to the keys, the keys were flooded of course, I'm driving up along the keys, fuck, it took forever, just about made it in time. But a full house, a full house. They were they were a shyer group than I expected. Then the last night I was there was they were a complete animal house, like it was a Friday night. But they, I, you know what? It was a Monday night crowd. They're nice. They're genuinely a nice kind of bunch of people who are like we've come for some comedy, and it was good crack. Now, in fairness, it was a good good night. It always it always is. In fairness, Gar Morton and, and Ab, Abs run a great show inside there. So that was that. Um, today, uh, today I'm recording this on Tuesday night, so I can have it out to you in the morning. But today we're in the. Uh, in the veterinary office so this is something I had no idea you have to bring the dog tons of times but uh, we kind of signed up to a thing that makes it much to, you bring the dog in at any stage really for this grand but they had scheduled it in because they just for six months they want to weigh the dog every month just to make sure the thing's putting on weight fuck is she what putting bulking up this dog has a fucking back on it like Arnold Schwarzenegger holy shit all the running around and protein rich food have been fucking yeah get the dog let me out I must take a shit in the backyard. Uh, fucking hell, she's bulking. It's like put on a kilo in a month. It's fucking bodybuilders that'll be happy with that. But one thing I noticed though, walking a kind of a, obviously a cute dog, mini schnauzer. Well, she's kind of big for a fucking miniature schnauzer, but schnauzers in general are cute looking dogs as pups, especially like, and you could be, I, I, there's a, a, the criminal de- buried deep inside me was going, this is how you would rob people. This is how you would pickpocket people. Because I'm walking the dog across like Tesco's car park away from the fucking vets. The vets isn't in Tesco's, but it's near there. And I, 
people were just stopping randomly going ah oh, and they're bending over and you're like your fucking handbag is hanging I could totally rob it what at least 10 different people came over and totally exposed themselves to being fucking robbed by me I'm telling you if there's any would be criminals out there you'll never get me rubbing your fucking dog anyway if you've half a shyster look about you but I and I don't have I, I don't have an innocent face I have the face of a man that might rob you do you know I know I've seen my face I know what it looks like it's not pretty it's a face of a man that would easily fucking rob you so these people are either very trusting or very stupid or the dog is just so ludicrously charming because she is too like, she just lies on her side like go on tickle me to fuck delighted with it so that was today I um I did another barbecue I did a, a barbecue video last I put it up yesterday it was for pulled pork but it was in preparation friends of ours are coming over um to sample the pulled pork and the, the chicken or whatever and again check out the video if you want it's up on the Facebook page it's just me being a fucking weirdo but it does the pulled pork came out outrageously good I just followed the recipe and that was that but um, the chap who came over he's kind of he's a new boyfriend to, uh, we've known herself friend for years like but this lad he's new enough on the scene he's very much not built for the country he's not, he is built actually he's a terrible nice fella but he, he this is raw country around here so after we popped in for a beer or two in next door like and it was thought it was just gonna be a quiet pub it's like, fuck. <laughs> it's like a Thursday night and it was fucking hopping with just insults the insults that were going back and forth were just oh for fuck's sake one guy's one guy had just gotten out of hospital couldn't be arsed he was at home he was bored out of his fucking skull couldn't be arsed sitting changing he walked over in his dressing gown and, and pyjamas He's sitting there having a pint, and everybody's he's called the lads are fuck. He's holding court. Everybody's calling him Hugh Hefner. This is a country pub, like it's just fucking beautifully bananas, and the shit and insults they're giving each other is just glorious, like. But it's kind of a it's a great way of venting, like. Like one of the lads is telling me how he he moved there and he just it lifted his depression. Just loves it, loves the fact that you can just say exactly what's on your fucking mind. <laughs> it's just fucking therapy to walk in there. The poor, the poor lad. It took him about a, a five minutes to get into the groove. Like he was like, "Okay, right, right. I'm, w- I'm with you. I'm with you." And that's the way sh- life should be. You should be able to just give each other a shit. Stop being such fucking softies. Like, just give each other a shit to the fuck, to the point that it doesn't matter anymore. Like, so you, there are no issues. You know what I mean? It's where Trump and what's his name? Just, just man to man, man to man. Meet up in a room, no cameras, no nothing, and just really have it out. See if that will fucking work it. Because you'd probably find that the two would be best fucking friends, I'd say. If they could. I guarantee they would be. They'd probably end up being best fucking friends. Right, enough of that shit. Anyway, that's that's what's coming up in the next couple of weeks. Like I said, next week I'll update you of the immediate gigs. There's no point in telling you. I mean, it's all over the weekend and stuff like that, but... As for now, Electric Picnic, you'll know, I think it's fucking sold out, so it's hardly up. I'm, un- I'm only gloating, so if that's the case. But there's definitely still tickets left for my theatre show in the Museum of Comedy, November 25th. My guest today is a very good friend. We've gigged everywhere, and he's one of the best crack in a drive, because the guy is so opinionated, and not opinionated all at the one time. Like he's, You'll all have known exactly who he is. If you've ever fucking turned on an Irish TV at any stage, and it was comedy on, you'll have seen Pat McDonnell, or Patrick McDonnell, as other people call him, but I call him Pat. It's all great. There's an airplane flying really low over the house. Great. Right at the perfect time. But Pat has been in it. fucking tons of things. He's most probably known for his characters on The Savage Eye, um, which we talk about as well but his probably best known character is probably Owen McLove from Father Ted uh, but uh, if you didn't know what Pat has been doing stand up and which he tells in the podcast since we way on back like so and he's a dynamite fucking uh, stand up he's done everything from The Savage Eye Father Ted Naked Camera and to, to name but a few like he's done a shit ton of pilots like I have fucking pilots yeah I've done loads of pilots too I'm a, we're both fucking qualified pilots at this stage of pilots um, uh, and hardly going on to lead anything but you got to throw enough shit at the wall as they say but Pat was this is a great crack podcast because he it went off a bit ranty it was great like um, 
Not too bad. Like nobody got. I don't think anybody. A couple of people might get insulted. I don't know. If they do, then you're probably listening to the wrong fucking podcast. That's the, you would have gotten. You would have been upset and covered your ears ten minutes back when I started cursing from the opening fucking sentence. Like so. But people do curse. It's a beautiful thing. I was talking with an old lady the other evening. I say old lady, but she was. Yeah, she was. She was elderly, but she was like, I loved it because I pointed out the fact that I don't not swear. Fuck that. I mean. It's, it's all about the intent and the, how you use it she was like that's exactly what I was fucking thinking I love fucking swearing they're just words if you were smacking somebody around the fucking head it'd be a different story right we recorded it in Pat's house and it was nice and quiet I think if it, were we clanging cups there was a couple of bits with cups, cups but we were definitely we are definitely in the house by ourselves anyway so it, the, the sound quality came through fairly alright uh, like I said I'm going to be getting better gear than this in the next couple of weeks next couple of, if I knew I, this is the thing I have zero advice I'm going to be sitting down with Colin Geddes doing his podcast and that man knows everything there is about sound recording tech and sitting down with him actually next weekend to do his and I think he'll be doing I think we'll probably do a duo of he he does mine and I do his he'll fill me in sort of gear but they, I think this thing is alright nobody has complained about this so far about the sound tech they kind of you get that it's a bit guerrilla warfare and all the rest of it but so far so good anyway Moving swiftly along, let's get to the fucking actual podcast. Please welcome Pat McDonald. Comedians said that it goes, it can go in, all, in the one direction, especially on drives, can't it? Oh do you yeah. Know the, do you know what's fucking wrecking my? It doesn't go yeah, like that conversation with anybody else on drives because you'll talk no. about the weather. That's right. And gas things that happens. Comedians yeah. aren't three seconds inside a car with each other. Oh yeah. And this is the thing about this podcast too. But lads have to be kind of care- they find themselves going. God, this isn't like a last time I talked yeah, I know. to Tom. This, I know. I was going to bring a solicitor, but I, I decided <laughs> I just, I, I'll just be careful. Yeah. You'll just have to be shot anyway if it goes yeah. off the rails. Yeah. But every comedian does it, and you know that on those journeys you're talked about as well. Absolutely. I'm not saying I've talked about you, you know, only favourable things, but like you know right well there's other oh, things. Oh, for sure. Yeah. For yeah, sure. Yeah, there's, yeah, yeah. there is, like, even if somebody kind of, who did I say it to? Oh, I do remember, but I won't say it. But it was, we were, I was talking about how this the exact same subject yeah. in a chat about how one, in one chap in particular is, he's, he's the, black belt are talking like this about people oh yeah and you know half of it is just mindless just coming out of his head but he's just yeah. complaining for the sake of complaining yeah, yeah, yeah. and he, the, the chap I was saying it to even went oh yeah sure I mean you and he went oh, oh and we were coming yeah, right yeah, to the yeah, gig yeah, anyway yeah. I went hold that thought yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> no I never went back to him about it because no. you could see he, yeah. he just reddened up straight away like yeah because he was obviously in the car for that conversation yeah, like, yeah. And, but more than anything not that I care anyway like but I'd love to know what yeah what is it I know it's not like getting a review after a show, but at the same time, it's kind of like, what is it? I wonder that, that what can you whinge about me, like? I know. That's a tough one. That fucker getting that gig. Yeah. I don't know, because I don't yeah. get those juicy I think gigs. it's like that in everything, though. You know, I think, you know, actors are probably the same. Oh, they are, yeah. They are, yeah. yeah. Um, and then, you know, when I, I worked on The Savage Eye, when we'd have a writer's meeting, and you know Dave, oh, Dave geez. is Dave, yeah, so yeah. he's vicious. He doesn't hold back anyway. I mean, there's no, no barrier. No, no, Like, you could talk about that in the car and then be sweet as pie to someone in, in the game, but Dave will say everything <laughs> Which and say it on stage. You can kind of appreciate it, yeah. So the, the directors used to laugh at us, saying, you're so bitchy, comedian, it's awful. <laughs> uh, but then when you get hanging out with them, you say, yeah, very oh, Christopher Nolan's give him, yeah, yeah, you know. Yeah, or yeah, someone yeah. Like, Or an Irish director, God forbid. Oh, God forbid, Oh, it's awful yeah. shit, yeah, yeah, yeah. So everyone's like that. Doctors are like it, everyone. I think comedians are probably more... And we're probably really quick at doing it. Yeah. Because what I found with actors is you'd want to know them a week or two. Yes. You know, or you want to be in their presence yeah. for a while, whereas a comedian will go straight, straight off. Yeah. You know, yeah. not quite the McSavage's standard. No. But McSavage always said when he gave out about other comedians, uh, it was like warming up. It was like getting his brain into yeah, a place where yeah, you could yeah. be a comedian. Maybe it's our way of warming up. Maybe it's that Possibly sprint is, along yeah, the sidelines. Yeah. <laughs> 
the old GP. It just keeps the gets the the juices flowing. Yeah, the very you know. old mental GPs. Why yeah, not? exactly. A, now I feel way better about it. Yeah, it is. It's a healthy thing. We all have to do it <laughs> because I did. I gigged at the weekend and there was an English comedian in the green room, and obviously, we, we, you know, I'm not playing the Ivy Garden, so names yeah. come up, and you're like, oh, how, why am I not playing? It? And they're playing it, and and uh, he he says the very same. It's the very same in England. I mean, they're all the same. Of course, it yeah. is. Yeah, yeah. It's but not, uh, I mean, there's yeah, and there's a level of popularity. There, there, I mean, there's a few gone over to, to England from here, and yeah. even I wonder what talking with other English comedians, what how they, that would draw, imagine an English it's vicious person coming over here and yeah. absolutely smashing it. I know. Jeez, you'd be yeah, foul, yeah. wouldn't you? Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. You know, Steve. Yeah, they would. You would. Like, so I mean, it well, there was that bitterness when I started to uh, say going over to Edinburgh. Yeah, and I was doing the f- uh, competitions. And you know, the English comedian says every time they hear, and now from Ireland, a new act from Ireland, they they just got very you know tense. And yeah, they knew at that time someone was going to be really good, and yeah. it's on their patch. They're gigging away on their territory, and suddenly you, someone comes in. We don't get that so much. No, no, no. We, you know, you see, Damien Clark is very nice. Like you know, I mean, he's Australian and he's got connections. Yeah, here. that's different. We never thought that of Damien. No, no, he'd yeah. be Jesus. Yeah, they never thought yeah, of it. That's yeah. a you never thought of it. It's funny you there never you thought go. of it with him. God, but if someone did, we'd be far more bitter towards him the next time. We should. Yeah. He's such a nice man. Yeah, yeah I met him at the nice weekend. Man. He's yeah. lovely. Yeah. Fuck it. Anyway, if only he was a bit of a dickhead, it'd be. I know that. It'd be made yeah. easier. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but you see, I suppose too, as when English comedians, the standard here is strong. Do you know what yeah, I mean? It is. Like it is strong. Here. Yeah. So I mean. I suppose the volume of people over there doing it as well but yeah. you hear a comedian did I tell you that time that I was over there and it was I was there for a week last year in London and it was I was on with this on the Monday night the host was this woman yeah and she got she's prevalent enough she's a professional stand up and throughout the week or whatever the gigs were grand you know what I mean they weren't mind blowing like yeah um, but they were grand and on the f- Saturday night I was doing a gig and it was a very strange gig. It was a bright room. It was in the centre centre and stuff. She was ho- happened to be hosting it again, and there had been five acts on, and everyone had. I was to be fourth, hmm. and yeah, they, there was five acts. I was to be fourth, and the three that had gone on before me had died in a way that the movie Dunkirk couldn't. Yes, even. <laughs> it, it was Christopher I, Nolan couldn't with all no, his he couldn't, he skill. Wouldn't do it. He wouldn't do couldn't it. Couldn't do it justice. It was. Un, it would have been unbelievable. Yeah. They were dying that hard. Like <laughs> he'd probably show them all at once, and they'd be all in concept. You know, yeah, you they'd see, build up. It wouldn't. No, this, be clever. Yeah, this was an absolute carpet yeah. bomb. And excellent. And what was amazing was that the audience were they were nice people. Oh. They weren't even yeah. it, like you could you couldn't blame like if you played if you just said hello that yeah. would have been enough interaction yeah. to get them on board. But all three of these and two of them were definitely seasoned comedians. They just wow. went up and just went boom straight yeah. into and some of the material you know you know you could tell a jaded anything. You oh, could tell yeah. a jaded jaded a jaded person a comedian and you could tell the things that are coming out of their mouth they hate it yeah, they hate yeah, themselves I they know. hate the material coming out yeah. of their mouth but before I went on she was standing at the back going it'd be alright they're going to like you and I went what thinking she was just talking about yeah. the Irish thing or whatever I went well you're funny yeah like that was her re- like you're funny yeah what the fuck are we all doing here if that wasn't your primary goal like, yes you know? yeah I know. <laughs> no. I know but it doesn't appear to me it's yeah. like alright oh, so the first three acts were spoken word it would yeah. seem yeah and right okay yeah. Jesus Christ yeah like, I know so it's acceptable yes. to that standard like you know that's right yeah that said when you talk about material like I, I you, you know when you're doing an old bit I often like and I'm mean, getting laughs for it and yeah, yeah. Think that went well but I'm thinking, I just have to fix that shelf now. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what am I going to do? I have to get the dog his shots now. What am I going to... And then that clashes with... <laughs> you're getting laughs, but you're not in the room. Yeah. Yeah. It's autopilot. Yeah, it is oh, it, yeah, autopilot, yeah. absolutely, yeah. yeah. There's not too many other... Well, I suppose, fuck it, there is actually, because this is the thing I never really thought about. It's like, who listens to podcasts? And like long podcasts too, because I yeah. keep these... Anywhere from 45 minutes to an hour. Because that's all I think people yeah. have in their week to listen to my podcast. Right, yeah. But I couldn't be more wrong. Like, there's... there's I was chatting with a, a lad the other day. Um, 
uh, Gordon Rochford. Do you remember Gordon? Yes, I do. Gordon has a very successful podcast called The Conspiracy Guys. Okay. Himself and two other chaps, and they'll, they'll sometimes have a guest on, and they'll pick a subject, and by God, they will pick it till there's nothing. So they'll pick North Korea. Oh, yeah. And they'll do a five hour podcast on that. Wow. It's, it's a fair bit of crack, too, throughout Trump it. might listen to it, might get some tips. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking yeah, he wouldn't get tips anyway. No. no, I mean, why do why are they bothering with North Korea? What's is it clearly be, North Korea must be sitting on a whole island of of plutonium or I something don't know. amazing? I really it? don't because he's just a mad little fat. We man. need a bad guy. We just need a bad guy in our lives. Yeah. But wasn't he happy? Well, you see, he like comedians, happy. we need yeah. a bad guy. We need someone you doing don't. slightly better or someone who does is not does, doesn't deserve the success they're getting. Absolutely. Yeah. So you know, it's no fun without that. Oh, like Savage actually to go back to McSavage. Like yeah, yeah. He was at the top of his game. He was selling Victor Street. He was doing like the he had the Savage eye out. Yeah, yeah. He was as better as anything. You know, giving out shit. I bet people way beneath him. He was better and given up, but so America needs a bad guy. I suppose they do. Yeah, yeah. I didn't think think of it that way because I suppose you and you don't need a bad guy that's serious about shit. Like Putin yeah. is no good for being bad. No, guy, he's Putin not. could kill you. That could kill you. Yeah, it could be the and end of the world. Putin would definitely win in a fight. Yeah, hands down because oh he's God. black belt jiu-jitsu. Black belt jiu-jitsu. Trump never fought on him. Well, he did when he was a kid. He, he went would... to military academy and all. Did that. he though? Yeah, he did. I oh, did. Yeah. But he didn't win. He wasn't in the army. Not at all. But he, no, no. yeah, he, would he be winning the fight? I don't know. Yeah. No, I couldn't think so. Yeah, but I don't know the the, the North Korea thing. Anyway, it's a distraction from the Trump disaster. Quite, yeah, 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 chaos. But yeah. do you think? Because this is the I'm. Are you? I'm utterly fascinated by in a James Bondy 1970s way about North Korea. I'm yeah. fascinated that they can actually. How are they? I mean, they have to be like they say. They cut themselves off from everywhere. Or yeah. But they can't. You, like you can't just invent a thing that's clearly been made somewhere else as well, yeah. and just go. Well, we happen to invent the exact I same know. thing. You know They're what I mean? Buying that technology. There's guys there who work for Iran and Russia, and God knows who else is going yeah, in there yeah. to do that. Gaddafi used to get like I, I saw a documentary about Gaddafi, and he had some German guy coming in designing all his. Oh, it's like, like the time that. the IRA yeah, went down to to FARC rebels. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So it's passed on. Someone's making a lot of money. But uh, yeah, it's a good. I'm just surprised, you know. I mean, like the IRA, or you know, they're so infiltrated. You, you, there must be a network of spies in North Korea. There, there must, must be, be yeah. infiltrated at the highest. There must be, yeah. Level. The, the but I mean, how? Like, if he's just blowing rockets because he hasn't made a rocket yet, they reckon that'll actually no. So, but loads of other people have. Yeah. I mean, if you just kind of ignore him, would it yeah. go away? Like, I don't know. Maybe. Yeah. Like, talk about two blokes that have serious daddy issues too, like... Yes, Trump and that's right, yeah, absolutely. D- gra- well, with your man, it's... Well, and Trump, it's yeah. daddy and granddaddy issues. And granddaddy. Yeah. Did you ever see, like, did you ever see Trump's dad? He yeah. Looked like a, now, Friend. he looked like a Bond villain, yeah. if everyone looked He was like. in the Ku Klux Klan when he was young, apparently. Was he? Yeah. Jesus. Yeah. They start, the Trump story is incredible, and Fred was the genius. Fred, that was the grandfather. That no, the father, his father. Right, but the grandfather was the a grandfather bit of a legend a as well. Legend, but yeah. he had a bit of a kind of a pub in a whorehouse. He did. He, yeah, he, did he just followed the gold. He followed yeah. the gold miners around. Yeah, he did gold miners, and he used to feed them the dead horses that had died on the way. Fair enough. Make burgers out of them. <laughs> so, I mean, they're just unbelievable. They're animals. <laughs> but he would like. I mean, you have to get some for I don't know respect or just you know of a yeah. guy who goes from. I'm going to be a real. I am a reality star. Yeah. yeah. Fuck this! I'm going to be the president. Do you know yeah. that? Yeah. Because you get enough people to around you to believe that. Yeah. And then be enough of a psycho to actually follow it through. And yes. Because people will follow a psycho regardless. Like they you will. Know I mean? If somebody's oh, yeah. that into a thing, yeah. you follow them. Like, yeah. You know yeah. What yeah. I mean? yeah. But he just fucking fascinating. It's like. fascinating. My wife has is no interest in politics. She we we stay up watching CNN until. Two in the morning. Right. Like, yeah. I can't get I can't get away from it. And like Scaramucci's resignation was devastating. Jesus, yeah. I thought he was the best character written into it. What a name, a great yeah. name too. Brilliant. Like. Yeah, Fuck comedy yeah. gold. Comedy but, gold. Yeah, yeah. But he's I mean, Trump is just like a stand, a re- petty, resentful, yeah. narcissistic. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I recognise a lot of it in us all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's the same material. And yeah, I mean, he is. He's, a, a, he's very like. Someone compared him to Woody Allen. Uh, like, yeah, without not being yeah, funny, but not, you know, without the humour. It but, depends on who, yeah. who you ask to yeah. about Woody Allen. Yes, indeed. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> but uh, yeah. Jesus, yeah. Yeah. 
Fucking, uh, yeah, because I mean, we have a, well, we've never, I mean, people take the piss out of Endo. I think Endo was a bit of a, I mean, he was a crafty old culture G. Crafty. Uh, oh, he brought that the was tra- an act, whatever that was, oh, that yeah. persona. Because I remember even when I was living in Dublin 8, and I remember seeing all these fucking, these, uh, you know, the, the, the chauffeur driven, the, the Mercedes and the Mercedes vans and everything. Yeah. Like, right, there must be dignitaries yeah. here. And Hugh Hoor brought the Chinese vice president over. Yes. he saw things who was China. now the president yeah. Xi Jinping yeah. and brought him over like and played yeah. hurling with him in the Phoenix yeah. Park and shot yeah. like, and nobody was bringing the Chinese in at that stage no. and you're like that is a crafty move because oh, all, yeah. all Enda was doing was turning over every single item made out of plastic in this country and went to, right we may as well go straight to the source so we'll meet the man who fucking made this that's right yeah yeah yeah, yeah. this is a crafty old whore oh he was absolutely I wonder if uh, Leo is as crafty probably is Crafty. Yeah. He lives near here, yeah. Yeah, but Leo was born with a bit of a silver spoon. He I was. mean, they say, oh, is it the gas immigrants? No, yeah. his dad didn't own a chipper. No. His fucking dad was a doctor. Like, oh, yeah. that's a different breed of immigrants. Oh, God, yeah. He went to our, he went to my daughter's school. Oh, did he? Yeah, he did, yeah, the local school here. And then he went, but then he went off to that posh one. Yeah, of in, course. In Luke and what was it? The, uh, oh, I can never remember. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, that one. The one yeah, no, yeah, went yeah, to, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. Bill's the leaders of tomorrow. It does, yeah. Yeah, Jay Edwards. <laughs> Jay yeah, Edwards. yeah, yeah. But then it does, yeah. So he, yeah. But he's well healed, yeah. Um, I don't, yeah. So I, you see, I don't know. You see, I suppose coming out of Mayo too, you'd have to be a crafty out. You know what I mean? Out it west. It's, I mean, five seats. Particularly where you've got five seats. Yeah. You have to fight for every vote. You have to stab your friends in the back. You have to. I mean, there's he's no a survivor. No. There's no two ways yeah. out. Yeah. Were you interested? I know you because you, you're you're properly up to date on history, like because you are a good history buff, like because even we were talking with I was talking with John Cleary last weekend, because we yeah. John is great for our nuggets. Yes. But he said the man you want to talk to yeah. is Pat. Yeah. When it comes to when it comes because we this is the thing that actually blew my mind with and I'm after blowing a few northern people's minds, but it's got blown a few northern people's minds. <laughs> that's an unfortunate phrase. <laughs> In the term of, you see, do you know the way country is so huge up north? Like, oh, yeah. And the border counties. Oh. Like, sure, you know, you can. Growing up with You're allowed yeah. <laughs> Who's Who would be the big big act that came out? Big Tom wasn't. No, he was Big Tom was Casablaney, yeah. Right, right, yeah. right. Our area, not so much. I mean, you know, I mean, we grew up with Philomena Begley, Gloria. Oh, yeah, yeah. And all of that. I mean, that was just pumping out of every car. <laughs> right was up. Yeah, absolutely. Country Were you Irish. a fan as a child? No, I hated it. I absolutely <laughs> hated it. My mother would blast it out of the radio. There was a, 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 a station called Radio, roll, radio Carousel. And, uh, oh, my God, yeah. And like Colin McDonald. There used to be a show called... When he had, yeah called Moving On uh, with Hugh Hardy and it was every day pumping out and at the end he'd go and now we're moving and he'd just go on for no. five minutes Moving On that's my childhood is that why so many truckers have that written on yeah. their trucks yeah that's right yeah wow tough going but it's <laughs> massive it's hey, we, massive I'm my, I'm my nephews now you know and they're smart very smart guy I mean PhD yeah guys. yeah yeah they love the country and Irish they're up in that uh, Monaghan. It's their like. It's their culture. It's unbelievable. Because there, there was a show about it. We took this is where we got onto. There was a show like there's been a couple. There was Stetsons and Stilettos, mm. and then there was another one which I think Hector. Did yeah, Hector book. voiced. Uh, he he voiced. And there was another one then that went up north, and that was it was a keeping it country. Something like yeah. And but it was it was showing this. It was almost like a Vice documentary, and that yes. was. Showing the seedy underbelly, yeah, that is. I know. The, well, not underbelly yeah. at all. It's actually yeah, know, it's total know. mainstream yeah, up yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, It's funny this conversation you said, and, and you're really up, up to speed on history. <laughs> History's your thing. You really are. <laughs> and now we're talking country and Irish. This was about country. <laughs> what <laughs> you asked me? To be honest, I would have started who, it with anything. Who what played was... bass with Big Tom? <laughs> in 1973. <laughs> He had, an automatic, dr- he had yeah. an automatic drum machine. He did, yeah. But the no, what it was, uh, John. John, I was it blew my mind with this. Where the phrase, uh, the term hillbilly came from, oh, and yeah. where country, because this is why I asked, why was it so big in the north? And he's I, because it's American country. When hold on, Tom, it's not. It's Irish folk that became that. And he reckoned it was because of the was the Williamites basically. Yeah, yeah, the rich mountains, yeah, essentially. yeah. I, I did look it up recently. I did, did Google you recently? it. I looked it up on, on Wikipedia. I think I did. Yeah, I mean, they went out to the. Uh, was it the um, what's the mountain range? It would have been the Blue Ridge, surely. Uh, not the Blue. Uh, or oh, the Appalachians, Appalachians is it, or something like that. Sorry, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And there were there were a lot of guys. I mean, if you know, I think a lot of the American accent comes from the north, like that. They're shut. They're yeah. shut up, uh, but you. 
you like that, that you know, the, the southern states so that would sound like I'll start. Right, no, and I, I think they get that twang. It's a mixture of English, and English maybe six seventeenth century English. What about a lot? What about the Ulster? Ulster right, Scots, yeah, yeah, and yeah, yeah. I think there's a lot of that, and definitely those people in the hills were Billies, where they were, where they were the Protestants, uh, Ulster Scots. By like, God, yeah, absolutely. I mean, Ulster Scots like contributed hugely to the so American population yeah, and yeah. settlers, and yeah, so they, they, it was only a hop skip. And they went from Scotland and spe- only spent a century or two in Ulster right yeah, and yeah, they yeah. made the move over and they had several presidents uh, you know who, who were of course yeah. Jackson sure yeah 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 there was yeah and there were a few others he loved that lad that's right he loved the slave yeah yeah that's right but uh, so yeah no it's full of it that's where that and that culture comes from you know so the, it, it's it's a kind of a stew of a lot of Irish and a bit of so do you think how did like why yeah. would it is it ingrained in their DNA up there so to accept country oh, back from absolutely the... yeah it never went away yeah because I mean country is big all over Ireland there's yeah, just no two ways but, but it's not and it's cross cultural I mean it's between the, the both communities in the north oh I yeah, yeah, really that's, that's, it, yeah yeah because these guys these lads who were in their 20s where you assume they're going to be you know what I mean just at nightclubs and stuff but there were this TV show was showing these lads going to dance halls yeah and they had like they'd have it spare like two or three spare shirts. shirts. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. They were sweating bullets. Yeah, I know. And it was like, but there was no shame. Like you no. know, here it's almost a shameful thing. If you, like, I like a little bit of country. There's yeah. some country tunes like some Willie Nelson stuff can be good. Yeah, good. I, I do like, like country. Yeah, I do. There have is a soft spot for certain country, but some of it is shit. Uh, but then some of ninety percent. Every genre is and, mostly shit. Yeah, jazz is shit. Apart from. Well, you know, I mean, yeah. there's great stuff in the 50s and Miles Davis and whatever else. Right, no. The vast majority you're going to hear is shit. And yeah. it's the same with alternative music. It's the same, same with, with comedy. Every, same, same with comedy. Same with it's a tiny, tiny <laughs> portion. <laughs> and it's the same with country. I mean, you do have the great American guys and even Graham Parsons back in the, you know, yeah, yeah, you know yeah. played with the birds and whoever else. And they're great, but uh, most of it's shit, yeah. But unfortunately, <laughs> most of the Irish, I can't think of too much of the Irish stuff that's good. no. Yeah. But I mean, it did show its, its popularity. Like it, it reared its oh, head yeah. when it did. At the time, your man Garth Brooks was coming. Unbelievable! Who the fuck else could sell out Croke Park? I it suggested fucking... having an election while they're all at the Garth Brooks concert, <laughs> having the election. We get it, you know, probably a reason, an acceptable government. <laughs> if those people didn't vote, they're the Trump. Heads, yeah, I think. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. our Trump. Yeah, heads, yeah. I mean, he he basically he'd sell. Maybe arenas in America, probably theatres in Britain yeah, yeah, yeah. and around the world, and stadia in Ireland. Stadia. It's five bloody nights, and it could have been ten. It could have been ten if he yeah. wanted, yeah, yeah, yeah. Jesus Christ, I mean, that's 80, maybe we'll say 60,000 a yeah. night. Oh my good God. Yeah, I know, I know. I still think, you know, yeah. I think there's an element what you say about my nephews of like they, they, they say fuck you to everyone uh, you know it, it's yeah, kind of galvanised the community yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. You, you, you know we love this we like this is our culture so they're almost good good god could this go full circle then and become almost pop on the, on the basis yeah. of their punk turns turn popular yes back in the day because yeah. they were, that's they right <laughs> yeah, I know the Johnny it's, Ryan it's, of uh, I'm Nathan com- Carter is the Johnny Rock, isn't he? <laughs> yeah. God. Do you know what, though? I mean, it'd be one fucking thing. You can give a guy uh, his juice if he's writing his own shit. Yeah. But when all you're doing is singing other singing people's, people's shit. shit. Yeah, and doing the same. It's bland. Good. It's, yeah. Um, and But you know from... I go around the country all the time. Yeah. And you see, going to every small town and the local hotel will have a country night. Yeah. Or that's a show band or country night. It's phenomenal. And it's phenomenal. Yeah. And they're we... selling the... We're playing to 100 people at yeah. most. Yeah, yeah. And they're playing to, like, thousands. It's... Fr- it's most places, yeah. They, but it's... It's it's who you... Like, it's it's... I only I talked with this agnosium I would people because my mind is still bamboozled by it. Like that would be that is, is its own uh, genre. But the same kind of people you show I I've seen because I've now been in, I've gotten involved with internet stars of Facebook and whatnot. Yeah. And you're like, oh, you're the same people. You're I will never see you at a comedy gig. Yeah. But this is your night out, right? Yes. I get that now. Yeah. Yeah. I get that now because. I can't be bitter anymore because I can't give you what these people give you. Yes. Do you know what I mean? I yeah, can't I give you... Yeah. Now, I mean, my stuff isn't exactly, you know what I mean, you know, 
boutique uh, boutique or, or whatever yeah. but it's not it's not lowbrow enough and I don't no. I wouldn't know how to make no, it lowbrow no. enough because my brain would go fuck I can't say yeah. that do you know what that's a funny thing uh, I've spoke to a few people say Paul Woodford worked on a show called yeah, Val yeah, Falvey yeah. years ago and originally uh, Val Falvey you were Val Falvey weren't I you? was Val Falvey in the you pilot I was yeah but in the pilot right. it was never broadcast but then Arda was the was the, yes, was the cast yeah, in the yeah, series yeah. now it was, you know the pilot was fine it should have been a Network 2 show but they put it on RT1 sure. and like him and Ar- Arthur Matthews the world founder Ted wrote it and they couldn't quite get into the mindset of the people who wanted that Sunday night tele- you know that killing a scully they didn't know the mindset yeah yeah, and like yeah. Brendan O'Carroll knows that mindset really yeah. well. Yeah, yeah. It's just that Dave it's a certain thing. Yeah, exactly. It's just tapping into however hard we tried, we couldn't quite get. And it's not something I admire. It's not something I particularly like. That sort yeah, of yeah, Brendan yeah. O'Carroll, the Mrs. Browns. But he knows his audience brilliantly. Oh, yeah. That's the, the thing. And I've, I've I've said I was only saying this again, and it's it's PJ said it. He goes, Tom, we're all. Stand ups were fucking idiots because we're yeah. trying to craft this Michelin star standard, yes, flaming on shit that can blow your mind, yes. When a lot of 90% of people probably just want fish and chips, they don't want it, yeah, absolutely, because they can't relate. They can't relate. I keep telling myself, I must write a show like that, do a one man show, Daniel Kitson like, and I never get around to it. I just, yeah. it's just so easy. If the gig comes in at the weekend, I just do that, it's easier, you know. Well, that's the other side of it, too. Yeah. I mean, like if you're in London, too, I suppose, and you're doing you know 10 gigs a week, like. You can you can quite literally as you're doing the gigs form a new show. Like, you can, you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, that's right. And he he's he's quite he's quite smartly built on as a cult status. Yeah. Um In that he you know he doesn't do interviews and he doesn't do this. Yeah, and I know. The other. Like personally, yeah. for me, I find it, him. I, I find his material to be almost a bit pretentious. There's, it is. Do you know? It was a funny. There was an article in the week. Uh, this week was it today? It could have been the observer. Because I get it online, right? Free. And uh, there, uh, a, w- a person of uh, who came originally from Pakistan said he used the word "paki" in a set. Ironically, and all that, you know. Who Kitson did? Yeah, Kitson. Now, not not any remotely racist. He was trying to say he I, he was making the point that when he grew up, everyone called the local shop the "paki shop." His parents tried oh, to be gosh, uh, yes. very uh, PC and call it the Sikh shop, where really it should be just called the shop. <laughs> but this yeah, Guardian yeah, yeah, journalist yeah. Get, had a whole article saying she was offended by him using the word packing. Oh, well, fuck off. Yes, like, you know. I know. I fuck off on many levels. Oh, there. Like, you know, I mean, I, I think it, that's like, just like, come on. I mean, you know, people, if you wanted to write a show about like racist Irish terms and say, you know, Paddy yeah. or what, I don't give a shit. I get it, so, you know. But even the fact that he... he, he but it's funny that even Daniel Kitson is yeah, getting Yeah, even he get, getting it from these yeah, snowflakes. But you know what? Yeah, Sometimes yeah. people need shit to write about. Like there was... Oh, God. Like, there's, like to pick that out. Can yeah. she hand on heart go... If you, like you wonder, I think, a bit tongue in their cheek going, I'm like, fuck it. Fuck it. I'm going to write... She's probably getting 300 quid or whatever if she yeah. gets from the Guardian to write it. I don't know. Because it must yeah. be the stuff <laughs> news yeah. if you're going after one word. Yeah. In a guy who'd be very liberal. Like, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's... But, the world is gone that's the other side yeah. of it. like the world is gone when you see this Berkeley fucking carry on and stuff and with the way yeah. snowflakes are and you yeah. a safe place like when you think of the kick in the hole which is kind of in a lot of ways yeah. like, and, like you were saying like we were you know you're kept down or whatever there is an element I think where the human ego is not quite let it, ready to be let especially the Irish one is not ready to be let completely off the leash I, I'm all for I am PC I am very liberal yeah. I am all for yeah, this sounds awful <laughs> but I am I will defend that you know and I, I think there, there is a, 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 you know I, I understand the motivation behind the feminist yes, movement yes, yeah, I yeah. see there is sexism now in relation to say RTE pay or BBC pay it's very yeah. hard to hear a, a woman saying I'm only getting 300,000 he's I getting 500,000 I know fuck off yeah. fuck you know? off yeah. Yeah, yeah but there is a lot of sexism and obviously women are not paid as well and there are barriers not yeah. for middle class not for the middle class women writing the articles no we have no barriers no, no, Look, no. there's a barrier right if you went to Gonzaga or you go to Clongos you're made you know yes. if you go to the really good schools yeah, you're yeah. made for life okay <laughs> now you're at more than like any anyone or women or anything but if you go to Loretto on the green you're next yes yeah, you're, yeah. you're pretty yeah. much there yeah, yeah yeah fuck off if you, you might not be do as well as the guy from Gonzaga but you'll do a lot better from the guy who went to CBS and the dog exactly fuck yeah yeah off. yeah, yeah. But but those are the, and, this, yeah, and people lose and, and no one ever well, people did Lenny Henry tried to say where are the minorities in that BBC pay thing it's okay women are paid as well there are no 
people from uh, you know an, a Asian Caribbean background, background yeah, or Asian yeah. background. But to me before, I remember I think it was a podcast. Or was it on? It wasn't on one of the daytime shows, was it? It was on. It was on, no, it was radio. Yeah. It was put to me to go, uh, and it was the same. Uh, duo were quite scorpy I shouldn't have been on this particular okay. radio ch- radio channel or this particular radio show it wasn't for me now yeah. you know uh, but they were they were almost do you know some a fella that goes to a festival with no shirt on just stomping around looking for a fight and then somebody floors him and then he sues you yeah this is what these two people were oh yeah they were I was happy to come on and crack the gags and have the fun yeah. and they just stomped stomp 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 around trying to pick a, pick a fight with me and it was they said well, do, you, do you believe there's enough because your man was completely white knighting the situation, which is, I love that phrase, where it's white knights, yeah. where they'll come storming in and go, did somebody say something against feminists? You know, yeah. it's like, shut up, you fucking fool. Yeah. There's plenty, of, you know, like that. Yeah. But this, they were, it was like, uh, do you not believe there's enough? Or do you believe there's enough female comedians? I said, absolutely not. Because what we need is, because what I wanted to do was point out, you're not looking at the fucking ratios here. Yeah. There's because they were saying you know it's you know do, do you believe that women aren't funny? I went no, that's not true. There's just not as many doing it. Yeah. So the ratio will be the same. If you take ten blokes, two of them are going to be funny, eight of them are going to be shite. You take one woman, yeah. What are the chances that she's going to be what, the one of the I two? Know, I said I look, it's just Tell ratio. I ch- I chose to do this in my mid twenties, maybe stupidly. Yeah. Because yeah, yeah. it's so precarious. It's I'm so insecure. <laughs> It's a disease. <laughs> it Being is, a stand-up yeah. comedian is a it mental is, yeah. health. Yeah, you yeah. know, you, you, I mean, we, all the criteria. It's a mental health. We should health be cared for more than anything. Yeah. Disorder. <laughs> we should be cared for. It's not. You're not. It's, we're not well people. <laughs> we need a and to say that there aren't enough female people with, with whatever <laughs> psychiatric. You know, there are many more men with autism. That's a fact. Yeah, on yeah, the yeah, autistic true, spectrum. Yeah. That's true. The, that's why it's so you're starting <laughs> yeah, to see a yeah, correlation yeah, yeah. between it's, the two. I, th- I think fair play to women for not yeah. being in comedy. Yeah. yeah. And many of my heroes, and this is like, this sounds bad, but like I love Carolina Hearn back in the day. Yeah, she's yeah, a genius. Yeah, yeah, genius. And I love the royal family and, and also, uh, what's her name? Um, I'm, uh, uh, Julia Davis, who did uh, 90, uh, 90 Oh, Night. yes, yeah. 90, One of my favourite shows yeah. ever. Yeah. Like, it's genius. And uh, to say that we're like sexist, or we're not, you know. Yeah, it's not. I remember Maeve when when the naked camera broke. About yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. 10, 13 years ago, whenever it was, twelve years ago. One of my favorite character, characters yeah. was you and that. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. But the, when when Maeve uh, broke with that, uh, she was interviewed a lot. Uh, yeah. In, in the media here, and uh, but the angle they all want to come up was like what's it like to be a woman in the comedy scene yeah rather is there what's sexism? it like to be but is there sexism yeah, yeah. Is, it, is it difficult for you was it hard to break through and all she could say was no it was easy yeah. you know because Fair play, she got yeah. a lot of gigs very early on she got a break early on she was only 24 it was easy and it was grand she got on well with most of the blokes yeah because you know, so she was that. another comedian it's, yeah it's yeah much, this, that was my, my thing about, about with these two when they were asking me that time was like I want as many women doing it as men because then we'd never have this argument again yeah because then it'll be level across the board yeah do you know yeah. what I mean and then I know you know yeah. and where do you go then do you turn around to the brick lane union and go here you haven't enough women I know do you know or, the, know. or the nursing men. and say there isn't enough go men go to the secondary school it's for primary schools here and it's all, my, my, my nephew's a you know a, 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 a training to be a teacher and right. all women and, you know and, yeah and, you know I, I don't know what the race is, but it's probably one to four or maybe more, you know, the yeah. training college. But then this is the other side, I suppose the argument is, or the, the, the thing is, we're we're involved in this world, so we hear this a lot. Most of the people listen to this podcast and go, what? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I know. It's, it's strange. It's like, our little we, world. It's our little world. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. they don't give a shit. Yeah. Did, did you ever, did you see the video back that we did of the... Of, we did near here it was for the FAI video. Oh, I did, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah no, I got, yeah, I did. For anybody listening, I very saying, good. Pat, we got called up to do. I said called up. I said called. <laughs> <laughs> we got called up. A draft. A draft. Yeah. <laughs> to yeah. Middle aged fuckers called yeah. up. To, oh, we probably would have hand, handled ourselves in the opening five minutes. I'd say we would have done all right. Yeah, yeah. But no, it was a FAI video. I I only saw it. Somebody posted it the other day, and oh. I I saw it, and it was it was me with a mustache. God, I looked like fucking some creepy old neighbour. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was good though. You were good. Yeah, yeah I think yeah, people yeah. appreciate it. Nice video, yeah. And have you, like you, have you, was, that's hardly the weirdest. I knew, given coming from somebody who did Naked Camera and, mm. and the Savage Eye and stuff like that and, and Father Ted. Yeah. What's the oddest one or can you remember an odd oh, one? Oh, you'd have you to give me time. I've done loads of different little corporate things. Have you? 
yeah, I've done mad stuff. It's stuff I couldn't talk about here, you know. I mean, I love- not, not rude, right? <laughs> I just, you know, someone will hear and they'll be offended. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. But I've done mad shit. I, I, Nothing yeah. for the KKK, though. No. Oh, you paused, you paused. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. Okay, so it could have been, is that yeah. what you're saying? Oh, absolutely, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Would you, though, if they rang you up? You know, There's 10 grand in it for yeah, you. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. You could have been in your heart. I was going to go a lot lower than 10 grand there. It's <laughs> <laughs> 400 quid, though. <laughs> think about it. <laughs> yeah, you don't have to believe, do Yeah, you? yeah. But yeah. Uh, no, I've done a lot of weird stuff, little corporate things. And, yeah. Yeah, just mad stuff. Was it, was the, was Naked Camera, was it as much, like, did it take a... Because stage, like, obviously, it takes a bit of balls to get up there the first 150 times, maybe 250 to 2,000 yeah. times. What's it like? Because I could only Im- if it Was it quite embarrassing? Or did you care because you're in character going into shops, basically, and acting a Mickey with fellas, like, and ripping them out of it? Like, Yeah. It, it, so, I mean, when that came up, I, I did the, we did the pilot of that. Again, people are going, oh, I couldn't give a fuck about the pilot. I, give a <laughs> I like the show. What are you talking about, lot? <laughs> Analyzing this. But I, we did the pilot, and... Uh, yeah, so I mean, I I was a bit nervous, yeah, because I'd done like Vox Pops before, but I'd never yeah. done Hidden Camera, and I always thought it was daunting, and I, I'd, be, I was, I'd be quite nervous. But when we went out to film, uh, I found it okay. Did you? you know, yeah. If you got away with it, if they fell for it, it was easy. Yeah, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. But I mean, it was hard approaching people. I'd be nervous approaching people. A bit like doing a gig, you know, before a gig. I you suppose, have to do a yeah, shite. yeah. You have to pace up and down. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. I get all OCD. I'm touching things and getting all like that. <laughs> Did you ever see PJ before yeah. a gig? Yeah, oh Christ! Oh, believe oh, he, he vibrates. Like he can elevate. He can. It was it, the, uh, the only time. The first time I ever saw it was at the backstage in the Vodafone, yeah. and I was going on ahead of him. And he was yeah. just bouncing up and down beside me. Levitating. Like, he I does. Said, Are you okay? Yeah. And he went, oh, "I am just very nervous." Like, yeah. I like why? They've yeah. come to see you. I know. It's your the headline yeah. of the. So I'm like that. I get one, and, and it was like that before every. And PJ was mad, so, you know. I mean, yeah, yeah, why yeah. you're doing it? So I mean, but you get used to it, and it was okay. It just got hard at the end because everyone recognised us, and people yeah, got a bit yeah. narky by times, and uh, that. But I was just trying to think of some. Uh, the first thing I did on telly, I think, was a thing called "You Cannot Be Serious," which was an improv. I've never done improv. I've no clue. I hate what? improv, and it was an RTE show called. Pre- Presented by Mary Louise O'Donnell. You know your one from the Vincent Brown show? Yeah. She's an academic. Not yes. the funniest, I would no, say. No, you know, no, yeah. Curious choice. Like first. Yeah. yeah, and uh, so I was on with like the people, you probably Joe Taylor, Eddie Bannon, and a few others. That was right. awful. What was, was what was it? It was a, it was an improv show on oh, RTE. So it was supposed to be like whose line is it anyway? Yeah, like whose line is anyway? That's it. Yeah, right. You cannot be serious. I hope the tapes are destroyed because <laughs> I just started and I didn't know what I was doing. And uh, that was a, like a, a baptism of fire in RTE. You, you were doing up and running with stand up at that stage. Yeah, you? I was. Yes, yeah. so, I mean, I got a bit of buzz early on, like uh, with the stand up, and I got into the Kenny Festival early on, and I got good write ups and that. Yeah. So. I was thrown in at the deep end. I wasn't quite ready, but like that was awful. Like that, that. <laughs> I remember Zig and Zag. When I was Zig and Zag, had a, oh no, Podge and Raj had a chat show a few years back, and they asked me to go on, and I said, if I, I just won't do it because. I know they've got a clip of that show of course and they'll show it again. It was mortifying. Oh, Jesus. Again, I don't like to think about it. It's like a repressed memory. <laughs> this is your name. Yeah. <laughs> but so, because yeah, I, I never knew that because I thought Father Ted was your first thing. How did it... the dog. Oh, is it oh no, it's not. It's someone doing business. I, oh, it sounded like steps in the house. We're alone in this house and I heard steps. <laughs> not the band who are reforming Not steps. No. Are they really? They are reforming. Oh, fantastic. They're all skinned. Of course they are, yeah. Sure, I mean, really, realistically, yeah, you could, you'd put anything back together. If there was a few quid in it, any of us yeah. would go back to do whatever. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. 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 If there was a Father Ted reunion, or, well, or, you know, yeah. came back and actually did a show, that'd be tough to do, though. Without Ted. Yeah, without Dermot Moore. Yeah, 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 would, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, um, yeah. So that was that your second for right. a Father Ted? Interview? Father Ted. I did a show called, uh, at last TV, I, there was a... A thing called the candidate. Myself and Joe Rooney were in that. It was like a little serial within this sort of a, a magazine show on RTE, and that was okay, you know. And then it was Father Ted after. Right. That, yeah. You know? Yeah. I'd done acting for a few years before. I yeah, you remember talking wrote about stuff and did like we made our own things and made our own short films. Where did you go to college then? I went to Maynooth. And, oh uh, right. Yeah, but yeah, I had yeah. friends in DCU. And so I used to visit them when we'd make stuff there with their cool. cameras and stuff. So that's where I got into it, yeah. Yeah. So you did, you were never, never thought of going up the road in Maynooth and the priesthood? Uh, when I was 12, up to the age of 12, I really? wanted to be a priest. Oddly, I thought they had I wanted a life. to be a priest as well, up until I was probably about yeah. eight. I remember then... the 1978 World Cup, uh, all the priests used to visit each other 
uh, in different parochial houses and watch the matches together and I thought that's the li- that's me that's, that's the, the life for me hanging out with the boys you don't have all the hassle of a family you've got a nice car they had good cars oh yeah and they had big colour televisions and that, that's it that's me heaps of scotch so I, I did want to be a priest for a couple of years up to 12 and then I figured out there was no God Right, yeah, 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 and then, but would you not have still pursued it? Like, you know I would I mean? have. Yeah, my brother said when when I when I did go to Manute, would you not just do the become a clerk, just do the degree yeah. for free, your free lodgings? And I thought, well, well you know, I want, you know, I want to be a lad. You want to meet the girls and all that, but yeah, yeah, they got more girls than I did. Of course, they did. The priests, the clerical students, the girls loved them. Yeah. Of they were the studs of the but college. It's, it's, I mean, they're they're white whales. Yeah, I mean, that's right. Anybody could be banging a history student. Yeah, you know, exactly. It was history, you did, wasn't it? Yeah, you, I did yeah. history. Yeah, yeah. Nothing, nothing. And uh, <laughs> the clerics were like, yeah, they were forbidden fruit. <laughs> yeah, and, yeah, uh, yeah, forbidden yeah, fruit. Yeah, yeah. 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 And I just so, imagine walking around like with big gold crosses on, like rappers. Like, just. oh yeah. <laughs> but they did. No, they had little grey jumpers. They had to. They couldn't dress like we dress. They had grey jumpers and little shorts with the collar out. What would they? Women went for them. Women like who were bohemian types went probably, for these clerics. I suppose yeah, but they probably looked a bit hip. They did, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. In their Farris slacks, unbelievable. <laughs> yeah. We would love a bloke in you. What yeah. does a cleric go on to do then if he's not? If they leave, they just do whatever. You know, you've got your degree, and so you do the H dip or whatever. You know, yeah. uh, become a teacher or do whatever you want. You just got a, de- you got your degree, and you've you've been put up for three years. You know, yeah, and yeah, full yeah. board. And were you like well, off history then? Did you go straight into teaching? Uh, what was I it? did a masters. Right. So uh, I did that, and then during the master, while I was doing the master, sure you, huh? you just didn't want to leave. Oh no, I didn't know what I wanted to do. <laughs> I went to college because I didn't know what I wanted to do. Yeah. And then I did a master's just to postpone. Life. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, it was when I doing the master's, I thought, look, oh, I really do do want to try to get into the comedy thing. Okay. Yeah. yeah, it was yeah then yeah. it was really got the bug then. Oh, cool. Yeah. And uh, so uh, yeah, so I did teach just to pay off loans. I hated it. Yeah. I hated every minute of it. <laughs> you told do it. You were telling we were talking about rough gigs one night when I think I was telling you about a rough one you went oh yeah 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 I taught in that area Tom that's right and you you, you but you were able to tell me like that it, 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 like because I thought I, I was thinking the same thing I was like are these like small villages in that the genes won't be good in the area because they're not breeding out over generations they're not moving out and the same thing ironically as you were you were saying Tom this can totally happen in, in an urban area if families don't move out and bring in new replenish the stocks with yeah. new women and new men yeah you'll end up with with oddly with uh, with just Difficult. inbreeding inbreeding yeah. Yeah, yeah 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 that's it's, it's an interesting one yeah it was it was tough don't mention the area because I, I won't be no. but it was it was tough I found it very hard I didn't like didn't like the staff room I didn't like the teachers right I found that very hard I didn't want to be a teacher I didn't want to I, not that I didn't want to teach I didn't want to be a teacher okay you know? yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. But sometimes I, because I found even through college, because you're, I mean, we're all a bit immature in college anyway, but you're kind of, you're one stage up mentally from, from junior circle oh, yeah. anyway. Like, yeah. You know what I mean? You are, you're like, okay, I'm an adult now. I need to get my yeah. shit together because nobody's watching me. But what I noticed when I was in Limerick was any of the students that went to Mary Eye, they were still carrying on like they were 12 years of age. Yes. It's yeah. the most immature I people. did a gig in, a, in Mary Eye. A few, sure. I did too. It was like, you know, really where the rest of development. Yeah. They didn't get, like, you know, I was go- doing loads of college gigs and people getting all the references. Yes, yeah, yeah. Loving it. And Mary and I were like, just like children. They didn't get anything. And was just laughing at the most basic stuff. Now, you know, it was unbelievable. Because uh, I, yeah. Uh, yeah where did you go to college? To- I went to LIT, then I went down to CIT. Okay. Yeah, um, to finish off my degree. But it yes. was, it was in it was only that we'd known people that went to Mary Eye. We were like, hey, yeah. we should definitely meet up. And they were, they were still like, they were excited oh, about yeah. getting a pint. Yeah. Like, whoa, yeah. we were seasoned professionals. I know. By second yeah. year, you're a seasoned yeah. professional drinker. Yeah. Right? But it was just a, it was a level of excitement. It didn't make sense. We were That's like, right. Oh, but then when you, I met teachers then at my old school who taught me when I had long left and I was yeah. in a place of management, even in construction. Oh, yeah. And at that stage, you had to grow up very fucking quick. Like, yeah. And I was maybe 24, 25. And I met him. And it was like talking with 14-year-olds. Oh, Ge- nice. This is in a bar. Yeah. They're all giggling amongst yeah, themselves yeah, going, yeah, yeah. Hey, tell me, tell me, tell me, tell me. What? And you're like, wow. Yeah. Holy fuck. Yeah, I know. Because, and this is a friend of mine who teaches. Um, but he very much keeps himself on the outside. He's a cool cat, like, and he's... But he... 
he uh, he said it to me. He goes, oh, expect he says the places where he is now. He says they're all kind of free thinkers, and it's a the school promotes that. So the teachers are like, they're you know, there's very little of that kind of childishness yeah. and backbiting and stuff like that. Yeah. But he said he's gone to places. He's it's quite a posh school too. But he says what's lovely is the staff room. It's basically an espresso and all because he's, okay. he's worked in rough places. Yeah. Where you you know you you'd make a spoon of coffee and it's you'd, it'd be spoon of coffee yeah. and it'd be put thirty pence in the yeah. and yolk like yeah. you know what I yeah, mean yeah like, yeah but it's it's just night and yeah, day so I, I suppose what do you exp- your students are yeah. going to be it's hard to it's hard to get mold I mean you weren't going to be like you won in in uh, what was that that movie where you know every white or there's been loads where every white teacher that moves to a black neighborhood is going to turn it around oh I know, you know that I mean? yeah no geez I was not going to turn around I was just going to turn around you weren't writing like like rap songs and doing yeah no no it. no I remember once a kid uh, I the, the bell went and I uh, I said no no one's knowing anybody don't run out and just one kid said oh fuck this and jumped out <laughs> the window and ran home <laughs> And I thought that's it. And he, the other thing was, I thought he, he's pulled. Yeah. He just pulled the parachute like yeah, nobody yeah, yeah. ever. Wow. Yeah, and then fuck, uh, fuck this, I'm out here. Yeah, I was told a few things. Like I was told not to go. Uh, uh, the vice principal heard me shouting at one kid, and he says, "Listen, his uh, his father works for a well-known gangster." <laughs> just oh leave Jesus him, leave him be. Christ! Yeah, and then uh, there were a few mad incidents like that. Yeah. Um, oh yeah, and I remember once in the in the uh, staff room. A uh, teacher saying, uh, "You see those sandwiches you made? They're uh, little. Is there a tomato in it? You might be asking. It's quite soggy. The bread's all soggy. I have a little trick now. I get a piece of lettuce and I wrap the tomato in the lettuce. I put it in the fridge overnight and it's perfect the next day. And that for me, all right, fuck this, I'm gone, out of here. If that's where your life, that's is my at. life is going. That's, that's where it. your life yeah. is at. So I will fuck take it. the shit. I will take the hen party at the lab for lunch any day." over that I wonder why you never complained because we did a gig and man it was I've talked about it since like in just a, so many factors and how shit it was but how good it could have been was a gig we did down in Wexford it was a town in Wexford do you remember was it was it Enniscorthy it was Enniscorthy yeah and it hit everything they had everything going for themselves lovely venue beautiful venue yeah fucking it's a beautiful venue as yeah. well and not one person at that gig was from Enniscorthy no. like. and I went up the town and there were no posters and they'd been sent 60 posters 60 posters and like you know you know when you do a gig I, I, I look you know say I'm on the second half I'll walk up the town just yeah. for a little walk get the energy out and uh, and you notice the posters and if it's sold you notice that they put a better work in yeah and then the ones that are shit you know right well they have sure, sat in our ass and done, done nothing even when we walked in the woman behind the counter was like hello yeah and we were the three acts yes. that were on the fucking yeah. poster yeah. physically our faces yeah. were on it and she was like oh oh right and your man was out smoking a fag who was supposed to be like the I know. Yeah, you know the director or whatever yeah. of the sh- yeah direct nobody had a title. That's right. If ever a place had money thrown at it from yes. the government, yeah. But but this goes back to what we were saying. There aren't enough women in comedy. Why is that? There, yeah, well, you're welcome to that. You, yeah, you on, are welcome to that. Yeah. No a woman I know is sensible. Is, is that stupid? <laughs> exactly. Deluded to have this belief to keep doing yes, that shit. Yes, because three blokes walked in there and continued with, and the show only went like. It got farce, even more farcical after that. A good woman in between all of us would have went, lads, let's just sit back into the car. Yeah. Will we? Will yeah. we just sit back into Absolutely. the car? Absolutely. Because nobody's going to benefit from no. this. Now, Maybe the audience... think about another career. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Maybe just have a look at your life. Sit down and have a word with someone, an expert. And... <laughs> but no. <laughs> if, yeah. But you know what? You can make light of it too. Because the way they had it done, the same contractors must have come in because even when we, I asked your man, is there a green room? Do you remember he was looking yeah. at me like, what two words did you stick together? You stuck a colour and a and an object. In, what? Yeah. And I went, you know, a room where we can go. I went, oh, right. And they had, they'd obviously brought the same government contractors that had done the local hospital. Yes. Down to do this place. Because yeah. the lino was the same. It's and even the same. And the same windows and everything. You get a hospital. It was a hospital room. The smell of it. <laughs> <laughs> you, you nailed it when you walked into the room saying like you were visiting like a mother in you hello yeah exactly hello? <laughs> exactly I know yeah but does your man even does your man when I asked him do, so do you want to do the the announcements and all mm. the rest of it and rather than doing it from his own board down the back like his own he walked out on fucking stage do you remember yeah 
It's like, oh, my. and then he brought me on stage as Tony O'Mahony. Yeah, that's right. And yeah. my poster was beside the fucking yeah, 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 in the wings. Like, it's a vocation. It is a vocation. <laughs> it is. There's almost nothing. Yeah. There's nothing in it. It's not a good life. It's not a healthy life. It's just yeah. yeah we've got some thing belief or something. They're it's a religious belief. They're coal miners. Yes. You know what I mean? Up to their fucking elbows in yeah. this hell right now. Who are thinking? Well, you know, I, I, this is this is making me good money yeah, right now. Yeah, yeah, A handful of comedians make a really good living. Yeah, a handful. Of yeah, yeah. And then there are those in you know probably you know uh, you do a lot of voiceovers and whatever and that yeah. comfortable. And then there's the you know we're getting by here. You know we've an industrial wage kind of yeah. level. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. know, so there's quite a few of that. Cornish pasties. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So there's quite a few of us like that. It's not enviable. You no, know? yeah, no, no. But, it's... but we do love it, and there's the, you know. They're That's so the thing you do it. love it. Like I mean, yeah. we did, did a, a, a gig the other night, and I think like all the laugh in the world can be great, but there's um, there are moments too that can be absolutely fucking glorious. Yeah, like, there was a woman stood up during a great gig over in uh, Mayo last mm. the, the, last week, and she was a mentor anyway to start mm. with. There's mm. always good to have a mentor. Yeah, and she would come up to myself and one of the acts uh, at the break directing fire at both of us because she totally misconstrued what we had said and took it completely as, in, as if we were talking about her. Okay. Now, one of the things, I was talking about mystical creatures that lived around Mayo. All right. Bit of improv to get him on board, right? Everybody got it. This is silly talk. Fine. Then, Paul, the other chap, had been talking about himself in his 40s and how everything's going downhill. She took this boat that she was talking about her and her herself in her 40s even though she was in her 50s and I was talking about mythical little gnome like women that live around Mayo under stones mm. that have little hairy chins and she said I basically took it that I was saying her chin was hairy oh and I just started laughing and went I can't yeah. I, I, I would love to deal with this scenario but I can't because I would yeah. I'd get in trouble because I would call her something terrible yeah but the, the lads went on stage totally wired went on stage and they're opening. They were now. They were having a banter with the audience, and they said something about little, and that this woman doesn't know what little is, and that this woman over here, she's too posh because she did look quite well yeah. to do. But this other, and they were talking about another woman who was out. She was out with the girls because she got divorced and she had to get in the whole house. She was laughing and all mm. silly stuff. The, the crazy one she stood up mid gig. I went fuck this. My husband left me last year. I can't put up with this shit and storm like stomped like yeah. a 12 year old out like a 5 year old out of the room and it was like of course Larkin couldn't even let her get to the door he went yeah you know that guy she went yeah he goes yeah he's not us <laughs> and then she just the door hadn't even hit her arse on the way out and Emma went wonder why he fucked off you know what I mean yeah. and got the, all the place got on board with it and everything else but it was just I laughed like I laughed like a fucking hyena because it was even in the in the awkward moment of the three seconds of silence where everybody went dead silent. I was yeah. ready to have a heart attack because yeah. I thought that is beyond glorious yes. to see somebody having a fucking such a lunatic yeah. who's gotten through our whole life being yeah. that much of a yeah. mentor yeah. and just break down. And yeah. then the audience totally nobody knew who she was. Apparently, right. she's a blow into the town too, oh, wow. so it wasn't awkward. Awkward yeah. for her. Where was it on? Castle Bar. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, it's a glorious gig. It's a glorious gig. Is that the one? Is it Jer? Jer. Oh yeah, yeah he's yeah. on to me about it. Yeah, get on that gig. Because there's a part of the comedian in me thinking when you're talking about this gig, I was not asked. How did you get that? I know, and yeah. that's why I was hanging it. I, yeah, I, I was going I back. All I was so doing, at least I was offered it. I was I'm proud fine you, now. Proud I'm with the stick, you know, because yeah. the gig is brand new. Yeah, too. You'll be at some stage. Uh, don't worry. Yeah, I will. I would don't worry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm down you, the pecking This order. is what you have to say. Isn't I it? was in Cross Malina recently and Bell Mullet, the furthest away place in the right, world. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. In the world, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Myself and Joe were over there, yeah. Was that a Father Ted night? It was, yeah. Yes, I saw I saw posters yeah, about it or something. Yeah, yeah. 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 How was that? Good, good. Ben they're good Mullet, out yeah. west, aren't ah, they? Yeah, they're great. They yeah, they're, yeah, it's yeah. good crack, yeah. They appreciate you coming over. Yeah. I have a thing with, the, right... I tend to go fine all around the coast. Yes, yeah, yeah. And around the Pale, around Dublin. Yeah. There are parts of the Midlands and I find it hard to go in. I find, you know, they're just little you know, pockets. I don't think that's your fault. No. I, I genuinely think that's a comedy. There's a comedy fucking roadblock. A that's blind somebody, spot. That's <laughs> something. But see, this is the other side of it too. Those people are being catered to, to, to Pat. They are being catered yes. to by... The stuff we're not fucking selling. Yeah. No, they are. No, they what are. What we were talking about earlier yeah. in the yeah. pod. 
Like, I don't think they're... We, we, and they will never... They just yeah. got forced to come to our show because That's it was either right. a GEA night yes. or it was the fucking only thing yeah. to keep them from That's fucking right. either hanging themselves or That's fucking... Awful. No, but yeah, honestly, God. Yeah. Guardian talk. will love this. I'm yeah. going <laughs> to... Send it on to the <laughs> mentors. <laughs> All the women. Yeah. All right. That was me saying that anyway. Look, let me... <laughs> I've, look, I've said fucking way yeah. worse to people. Oh I've god, said. yeah. There's yeah, yeah. there's a bleakness to some some people, and it's their own doing or whatever. Because sometimes when you see them, kind of, if you have enough time with them, sometimes they can come around, or if you've enough patience. But there's they want that instant gratification of yeah. the stuff where I can't, I don't relate to you at all, Mister. Yeah. So fuck you. I'm going to turn around in the seat. And, that's right. And just be yeah. spiteful throughout yeah. this whole thing, and that's just oh, a I thing. Know. Yeah. Yeah. And that's infectious throughout yeah. small towns. Too. Yes, Sometimes, it is. Yeah, yeah. Because you'll see some places, they're as jovial. You go down to Listole, they're all dancing at the crossroads. Oh, it's they're the brilliant. Happy, happiest bunch of people. Kerry's great. Why we were in Kerry that? recently. I don't know why it is, but they it's have something as much to do with the rock, coast. They have as much rock and fucking yeah. bramble as some of the most miserable counties, yet yeah. they're making it work down there. When I've done gigs in Leash, and you do like one that's maybe 10 miles just further on than another one. Yeah. I won't name names. Yeah, yeah. And you do one, and it's the Dublin end of it, and... You have a great gig, and then you go out just a little bit more. They yeah. have no idea what you're talking about. It's yeah, yeah. yeah no, I I've been there, it's but I've, I've done one in uh, in County Limerick, and it was like that Mary I one you were talking about. They were a young enough crowd, but they were, but a lot of them were they had inverted teeth and stuff. You know what I mean? They, I know. And they were looking at me for every second I was up there for that half an hour. They were looking at me like I was telling the truth. Yeah. You know, not actually yeah. telling jokes. It was like the yeah. concept was completely lost on them. I know. Like, And these are the people, and I was able to explain this. I was to, to a lad I was chatting with the other day, the kind of people they are. There's lads I know that they they do, they joke about Irishy things and they're on the internet and it's all about, you know, hurling and stuff like that. And one of them, they posted, a, they had a big following on social media, they posted a Snapchat picture of this lad at a Junior B, clearly a hurling or a football match. Mm. Because he was, well, he was, because Junior B is the jokey sort where it's so oh, terrible, yeah. lads mightn't even have football boots or whatever. There was a picture of a guy and it's a genuine Junior B match. He was wearing a jersey but a pair of jeans and a pair of boots. And I wrote underneath it, um, and this was even a fucking hurling match do you know that he didn't have a hurling yeah. or a helmet <laughs> yeah. and at least nine blokes wrote underneath it no it was gaily oh, it was, do you know what I mean so oh this I know is, I know Yeah. and I, I had to write at the end cheers yeah. lads I got that Yeah. I'd love to see the correlation between country and Irish country music <laughs> and these difficult pockets where you can't get to comedy I, see this is it like you yeah. know what I mean where people dance well, if you see a Nathan Carter poster don't go to that town don't go to that fucking town <laughs> right then <laughs> Yeah. On that delightful note, do you have anything you want to promote coming up or anything? Uh, the Laughter Lounge again in a fortnight. Uh, or for, well, it'll be Thursday week. It'll be there this, this, tomorrow week. And I've got a few gigs around with Joe. Joe Rooney's website will have them all. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you need to get a website. Yeah, I know. Because yeah. a lot of people yeah. really like That's you, so right. you need yeah, to get yeah, a website. I know, I, I know. I'm afraid of the internet. I'm I know, afraid yeah, of it. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of mad people on it. It's a scary place. Well, yeah, so, yeah, they're. Yeah, you yeah. might end up forming opinions that you never wanted before. That's like, right. Yeah, no. I'm happy outside. It. Yeah, and yeah, <laughs> to live in the dark. Yeah, yeah. you're dead right. Actually, yeah. yeah, if you yeah. can avoid it. Anyway, it's been a pleasure. Thank you. No worries. Yeah.